Are you having problems installing your skimmer? Or are you having issues with it not skimming properly, possibly overflowing? You might want to watch this video because I might have some great advice for you. All right, so today we're going to be looking at protein skimmers. In specific, here is my Bubble Magus Curve 5 protein skimmer. I've had this thing running for about 37, 38 weeks now, and I like the skimmer a lot. Uh, definitely highly recommend it. It's a great build. Uh, it's constructed very good. Um, I've only had to clean it once, but I do have a light bio load in my tank. But it's very easy to put together right from the box, and it's very easy to operate and maintain. So first I want to just go over um, the Bubble Magus Curve 5 protein skimmer. I have this in nine and a half inches of water, but I also have a uh, one inch platform that it's sitting on. So I recommend that the Bubble Magus Curve 5 sits at eight and a half, maybe nine inches of water and that seems to be the sweet spot for this skimmer. The skimmer is very easy to adjust and operate. You can see here this little red handle and it has a minimum, one, two, three, and a maximum. So the maximum, what that means is for this skimmer is that it has the maximum allowance of water leaving the skimmer. So when you set yours to max, what it's gonna do is it's gonna this line of bubbles is actually going to be lower and when you run it to minimum your bubbles are going to be higher so normally when you start a protein skimmer from scratch you want to set it at its maximum because it's going to be overflowing for quite a while until it you know breaks in they call it so breaking in with pretty much what it means is the motor the inside of the skimmer and all that pretty much get used to the salt water and the bio load in your tank now, like I said, I, I love this skimmer and I actually almost wanted to get rid of it because I was having problems where the collection cup was constantly overflowing and spitting water out of these holes up top and it would just do it randomly. It'd be running totally fine for a week or two weeks and then all of a sudden I would come downstairs, look underneath and there would be salt spray everywhere and it would just be an absolute mess and it was really irritating. And what the problem was, was, was me really, it was a user error. So with all protein skimmers, depending on your bio load, is where you're gonna actually set your um, water intake and your water outtake. Your water intake's always gonna be the same because the pump is sucking in the water. So whatever power your pump is set at, uh, unless it's adjustable, you're gonna always get the constant intake. But the outlet is where you would make the adjustments on a protein skimmer. So with this one here in general, like I said, as you bring it to minimum, it's going to make these bubbles very high. I just cleaned this so that you guys can see clearly where the bubbles are. The bubbles really only start, you turn this, maybe take this off so you can see better. So the bubbles really only, you know, come all the way up to maybe an inch above the collection cup rim. Now the collection cup does drop down about another inch and a half where it seats into this collar. And I used to have it so that the bubbles would come all the way up to almost the top. And I kind of wanted this froth to overflow. Well, with this skimmer, and I'm pretty sure with most skimmers, that's too much. See what I'm gonna do is here is I'm gonna actually bring it up and see what happens. You don't want that. That's not what you want and it could randomly do that at any time. So what I suggest with any skimmer, no matter how old it is, especially if it's brand new, you wanna set it so that the bubbles only just come up a little bit past this first plate right here. You just wanna see a little bit of bubbles, maybe an inch above, depending if your neck is really high, you could go a little higher, but you don't need it to be so that the bubbles come all the way up. What's gonna happen is, is over time, your bio load is gonna produce skimmate, which is that nasty green or brown film. And it's going to stick to the inside of your collection cup tube. And what happens is, is every time a bubble pops, 
it releases that skimmate, that nastiness, that bio load, that, that dirty water, the fish waste. And eventually the inside of this inner tube will create, will get a film on it. And it'll create kind of like a sticky film. And every time um, bubbles continue to pop, they will stick to that nasty film. And then eventually it'll overflow and you'll have, you'll have some in here. You know, sometimes when you turn your water on or off or you turn your skimmer on and off, your system on and off, it will bubble up, you know, just for a couple seconds and then you could get a little bit of water. But you always wanna have your bubbles set down low. That'll definitely produce a drier skim. It'll, it'll catch a lot of the nasty stuff and it will prevent, hopefully it will prevent your skimmer collection cup from filling up and overflowing and create a mess. So that's it for my little information on protein skimmers. And if anybody's looking at getting a Bubble Magus protein skimmer, I know a couple people that have the, the Curve 5, the Curve 7, and they love them. They're collecting a lot of nasty skimmate from it. And um, like I said, this one's 37 weeks old. Only cleaned it once and it's still running, you know, good to go. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope this was helpful. See you guys in the next one.